Today we'll be discussing the background behind our cardiogenic shock program, specifically looking at the state of affairs prior to the development of our cardiogenic shock team. We'll also be examining the internal processes that we developed to improve the care delivery for these patients and look at the results that we've achieved over the last several years. Finally, we'll be looking at our future directions for this program. Cardiogenic shock is a highly lethal condition, and mortality has ranged at around 50% since the publication of Dr. Hockman's work in the shock trial in 1999. The conceptual model underpinning cardiogenic shock begins with the paradigm of coronary thrombosis, which leads to acute myocardial infarction. This ultimately leads to both systolic and diastolic dysfunction and ventricular failure. Ultimately, that can progress to multi-system organ failure and lead to progressive cardiac dysfunction, ultimately leading to death. And another important phenotype of cardiogenic shock are patients who have chronic congestive heart failure and develop acute decompensation leading to cardiogenic shock. And we have developed algorithms to help serve this vulnerable patient population as well. The treatment of cardiogenic shock features a variety of mechanical circulatory support devices. These include the pulsatile devices, such as the intraaortic balloon pump, the axial flow devices, including the impella, as well as um, centrifugal flow devices, such as Tandem Heart and ECMO. So several years ago, we noticed that our outcomes in shock patients was okay, but it wasn't great. And good is not enough, so we decided to find out what the problems were. And there were several. Fractured care was an important component, but more importantly, late detection was a serious problem. There was also impaired access to care and variations of care depending on who the provider was and what time the patients came in. So we decided to tackle all of this simultaneously and came up with what is now called a shock team that starts with a single number that anybody can call to activate the shock team. Several providers uh, who represent a multidisciplinary team would then get together and discuss the case. There then continued to be collaboration uh, with the team members about this patient as uh, his or her care progressed during the hospitalization. So like I said, late detection was a major problem. And sometimes it can be very hard to figure out who is in cardiogenic shock. So we came up with the criteria to make this process easier. And once the criteria was met, then it was easy to activate the shock team. Following our root cause analysis, which determined the causes for uh, suboptimal mortality, both at the Inova Heart and Vascular Institute and frankly nationally, we endeavored to, to develop a multidisciplinary care team to better improve patient outcomes and care. We assembled a multidisciplinary task force to look at the scope of the problem and identify solutions. We assembled a group which included representatives from interventional cardiology, advanced heart failure, cardiac surgery, critical care, emergency medicine, nursing, administration, and many, many others involved in the daily care of our sickest patients. Along the way, we conducted regularly scheduled after action reviews, whereby we could assess how we were doing and become a continuously improving and continuously learning organization. Most recently, we have started a shock team sprint, whereby we've re-examined everything from soup to nuts that we've been doing on the, for cardiogenic shock care throughout our entire geography. Thus far, we have treated more than 400 patients, and you'll hear soon about our outstanding and improving outcomes. One of the important questions that we wanted to answer at the Inova Heart and Vascular Institute, not only to our referring physicians within the Fairfax Medical Campus, but also to our referring physicians and hospitals within our health system and in our community, is why is there a shock team? Who is on the shock team? How is the shock team activated? And what are the processes that go into place upon shock team activation? We believe it is critically important that a standardized team-based approach for cardiogenic shock is for all patients in cardiogenic shock, those that have acute myocardial infarction, as well as those that have acute decompensated heart failure. In order to objectively identify cardiogenic shock, we believe it is important to have clinical and hemodynamic criteria, which physicians and healthcare providers at the bedside of the patient can use and implement in their practice. Once a patient has been identified to be in cardiogenic shock, a pathway starts in which they will either proceed emergently to the cardiac catheterization laboratories for coronary angiography, percutaneous coronary intervention, hemodynamic assessment, and potentially percutaneous mechanical circulatory support. 
And if they have acute decompensated heart failure, we then implement a, a strategy that uses multidisciplinary assessment using right heart catheterization and echocardiography to determine whether they are in need, indeed, of percutaneous mechanical circulatory support. Once that decision has been made and the therapies have been implemented, the patient is then transferred to the cardiac intensive care unit where they undergo serial reassessment and further evaluation. Hemodynamic criteria include a pulmonary capillary wedge pressure of more than 15 millimeters of mercury, cardiac index of less than 1.8 liters per minute per meter squared, or less than 2.2 liters per minute per meter squared with vasopressors and or inotropes, cardiac power output less than 0.6 watts, and a pulmonary arterial pulsatility index of less than one. Contraindications to mechanical circulatory support include a DNR code status or patients that have other medical comorbidities that supersede their current cardiac illness. Once the cardiogenic shock team has been activated and a plan of care has been determined, we recommend utilizing the cardiogenic shock order set panel in EPIC, maintaining robust monitoring of the patient with labs and EKGs, having two large bore IVs, and using vasopressors as a temporizing measure until the patient proceeds with further therapies. With vasopressors, we recommend the use of norepinephrine. Through our multidisciplinary team efforts, we have improved and sustained improving outcomes. Initially, we had the same less than 50% survival that has been noted nationally and internationally over the past decades. Through our intense efforts through our, across our entire multidisciplinary team, we have now improved our survival across our Northern Virginia footprint to over 70% survival. Most importantly for me, this translates into a significant numbers of lives saved, all of which are people that are my friends, my neighbors, and members of my community. Importantly, through our excellent multidisciplinary coordination across our entire geographic region, we have demonstrated that survival is equal whether you arrive at the Fairfax Hub Hospital or at any of the Spoke Hospitals so that we can deliver the same standard of care across our entire geography to our entire local population, day or night. Some important EPIC resources that we've created to help in the care of the cardiogenic shock patient include an order set at time of team activation, which includes important lab tests and parameters to be obtained. Additionally, there's an order panel embedded within the ICU order set that includes um, ongoing labs and hemodynamic parameters, which are critical for monitoring these cardiogenic shock patients after they're identified. Documentation around the cardiogenic shock patient occurs at time of team activation, and that note includes the team members that were on the phone, the clinical criteria and parameters that were met, as well as the decision that was reached and what the plan of care is for that patient. System lists were also developed to help us monitor these patients more effectively. These system lists involve patients who were activated um, for the cardiogenic shock team, as well as patients who received temporary mechanical circulatory support, such as an impella or tandem heart device. Some of the future directions for the cardiogenic shock team uh, include our participation in national trials uh, with multiple centers. Uh, we're very excited about this opportunity. In addition, we'll be continuing our research program, which will be focused on looking at some of the subsets in cardiogenic shock, such as the acute on chronic decompensation patients, uh, as well as starting to look at biomarkers uh, in these patients. Additionally, we will continue doing our after action reviews and really focus on the patients that are being transferred in uh, from our spoke centers and, and sharing uh, with uh, the entire team uh, the results that we're obtaining and continuing to work on optimizing our structure and processes. Some of the keys to care include early recognition of shock, easy one-call access uh, for providers, a standardized approach uh, with protocols, right heart catheterization, and then after action reviews uh, so that we can uh, continuously uh, learn how to better care for these patients. I'd like to thank all of you all for your time and attention today. I'd also like to thank the cardiogenic shock team as well as the clinical effectiveness sprint uh, team which have been so essential 
uh, to allowing us to uh, continue to improve and refine um, our uh, structure and processes related uh, to the care of these complex uh, patients. The team-based uh, approach to cardiogenic shock has really allowed us to provide the world-class uh, health care uh, to all of these patients uh, with cardiogenic shock consistent uh, with the mission of our health system.